Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, let's see what they have to say bef just before we enter. Because it'll have changed. At the cost of his own life, did Master Louis Swa strike down the primal Bahamut. Whatever the true nature of his new incarnation, it cannot be suffered to threaten this star. Like most who have spent time in Ulda, I haven't seen eye to eye with the Amalja, but today I will fight side by side with them in common cause and hope that none of them remember me. <laughs> the grasslands? Dude, it's in the fucking Sigoli Desert. What fucking grasslands? Also, that makes Arenfold and Fordola's whole r rationale of, oh, we're not likely to be spotted. Uh, pretty fucking stupid, because, uh, if it's a grassland, even if the grass is high, well, it, actually, unless the grass is high, unless the grass is, like, neck high, they're gonna be spotted by any sentry tower. Like, that's... Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. So, hmm, how do we want to take? Hmm, 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 hmm. Let's see. Well, the temptation to take Alice is pretty strong. Uh, let's see how freaking large my trust menu is. T too, too large. Too large. Okay. So this is the default party for some reason. Uh, I guess because I'm on DPS. Um, yeah, we gotta leave Alpha Bro out. Let's see. Our fates are not yet sealed. Cool, cool. Hmm. Hmm. Let's let, let let's have it be a manly party of of men. Hmm. Get ready for cool music. All right, we'll just use a pizza because fuck substats. Might as well deal with this pull right here, because this caster is gonna be annoying. Is that Urion J that did that slow effect? this music.
Now that's a pretty cool voice line. Did he cast death on somebody? <laughs> I think he did. See, now this dungeon is actually e interesting, because instead of going to the north always, you go east. And there's kobolds. Oh yeah. I wonder if Garahati is like, Oh, I've got Dragoon Tether since I noticed me. They really need to make one of Dragoon's AoE hits prolong uh, Chaos Thrust. It's just stupid that it doesn't. Yeah, I probably should have Star Diver the small one. Oh well. And I'm just keeping these pools small because it's, it's really easy to overestimate what trusts are capable of. And they're always capable of more um, when you're the healer or you're the tank. When you're DPS, like, you don't have that much control over what's going on. So. Kind of sad, but it's whatever. Ooh, I got a balance from Yuriyan J. How nice of him. Those are some big hits they were doing. <laughs> Yuri on Jay about the kobolds. Most impressive. A Marisidian dragon, huh? This is an interesting mechanic. You have to uh, put your lightning on an unkept uh, lightning rod, basically. Man, you're young, Shay. Do you not know how to use your cards? Yeah. 
I could probably faint that next bus here, but... Oh well. Catboy Sage Deluxe, you whore! Well, at least he's not dead. God. I'm a, I'm a genius. I'm a genius. Yeah, you know, the name of this boss, I think it's Egyptian. Um and obviously that's a discount Imdu good from uh, Binding Coil, or Final Coil. And, uh... But, the name Amhuluk... It was, it was used... Oh, God damn it! Uh... It was used in Final Fantasy XI for a, um... A notorious monster in Abyssia. Or Abyss Sea, depending on how you. Tancred? Come on now, buddy. Come and help me out here. I'm just gonna tether Tancred real quick. I might have bitten off more than I could chew, but. Well, we've got Lucia and, uh. Well, I guess she's fighting her own guy. Can I hurt her guy? I can! Step targeting is irksome. I think they were leading a Gradanian contingent right then. Oh, no, you don't. Alright, a staying and saving an Amalgia. How about that?
you gotta breathe fire on these guys. At least, yeah, there we go. I love, I love having aerial support. I mean, sure, she's on the ground right now, but I mean, she flew here, right? She is the bomb. <laughs> First dragons, and now this? <laughs> This class is going to be weird with trusts. I should, probably should have come on Dark Knight. Hey, y'all weren't on the teleporter pad. Oh well. Trust get a little bit of leniency, I guess. Now this Magitek core, no matter how fast you damage it, um, I'm not sure exactly how much time has to pass, but once it hits 50%, you get ejected. So you, you always have to do two phases of this fight. Kinda sucks, but it is what it is. He gave me an Uwer again. I wonder if he's like not, not programmed to hold cards or something. Would, would y'all get out of the way of the giant laser beam thing? We got missiles. Knockback immunity. Yep. All in all, it's a fairly interesting uh, AOE fight, but with trust, it kind of sucks because there's it's movement intensive, and so like yeah, you can see that their damage is really suffering, and you know they don't really AOE very much. Could be worse though. But whatever. Maybe that's his way of saying I should have done it. Now this particular pool, there's nothing after this pool. Uh, as far as like doing a mega pool, so you might as well stop it at the dragon. Um, if you're like with a normal party and you're the tank, because the dragon always stops to do two breath attacks, so it separates the pool if you try to just pull it to the wall. Kind of annoying, but something to consider.
Man, Thancred is not melee friendly. It's okay though, it could be worse. I basically wasted that. Oh well. See how easy it is to see all of, you know, everything? That grass is like ankle high. And like, notice how the tower is like surrounded by it and how like if you were to walk across this field, you could be seen from miles away. Yeah, there's no way Arn Fold and Fordola snuck up on this tower. Like, at all. But. Now, we could, since we have Tiamat on our side, we could go up a little further, but because we're dealing with trusts, um, the next pull, there's a complication to it, and Frank, Fancred will get fried. So, yeah. That would be the complication. And see, with a mass pull, too many AoEs happen. And Thancred, uh, bless his heart, can only dodge like one or two at a time. And so he'll get fried by Lunar Bahamut's breath. But when you're in a full party, it's, uh, it's a really good idea to just pull everything because Tiamat will fight it for you. And even if you wipe, she will continue to fight it and by the time you get back, like everything except for the big dragons and these armored dragons will be dead. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I really wish that Trust could dodge while still doing some of their rotation. Because players can. I guess it's too complex though. Oh, I got Steps of Faith music. Telotherium. It's like a combination of Therium and Telothabroi, so basically t t Telo Beast, t Telo Beast, End Beast. Not exactly a uh, not exactly Hawkeye Gulf, but uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. Whatever means we can get to ground a flying beast to ground level. All right, Catboy Sage, don't move out of the way.
Ah, sweet, it's the Mega Flare animation from turn 13. So we want to wait for this first thing to go off. Yeah. Hey, coming. That's a cool AOE marker. My positional Hirion J. The one that, yeah, the center becomes safe in this one. Watch him jump away now that I just buffed everyone. Hey, wait! Tancred actually did Heart of Light before... before damage. Wow. They're working on the trust AI. They're working on the trust AI, baby! I still don't really like trust, but... Oh well. They're not going anywhere, I guess. Player base likes it too much. Center. Oh, it is not the center. Oh well, we're gonna we're gonna take a hit. Ow. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get a limit break too, so I'm gonna limit break after after Star Diver. Take a drink of water. Sorry for drinking noises. Alright, good job, Team Testosterone. And the Warrior Light uh, celebrates less and less every dungeon. Chess piece of scouting, huh? Oh, okay, it's like a... Yeah, it's a Malja gear. Aw, oh, no comms. Nah, you never get comms with trusts. I'm just being facetious.
Did she just copy the Warrior Light Stoic nod? Noble <laughs> warriors, the dragons chose their friends well. Long have our peoples waged war, but no more. Your fallen lie beside our own. By our words and deeds shall we honor their sacrifice. <laughs> the enemy of our enemy is our friend. And you have proven yourselves worthy of our trust. It is the Garleans who are deserving of our fury. Hmm. I shall see that my brethren learn the truth of this day, and rally as many as possible to the cause, till we meet again. Do you reckon that's the voice actor for Ral Bon putting on, um, you know, putting on a grittier voice? Kind of sounds like him. And thus did we make allies of the Amalgia. It would certainly seem that way. The Sultana will be pleased. Let's go and give her the good news, shall we? Sometime earlier, inside the Pagelthon Tower. Hmm. Hmm. Bodies in flesh walls? It reminds me of X-Death's Castle from Final Fantasy V. <laughs> the ground's squishy. What in Ralga's name happened here? It kind of looks like the creep from, uh, you know, the, the Zerg have to build on in fucking StarCraft, too. The gods only know. But you can bet these poor sods aren't here by choice. Quickly! We've got to get them free! Not necessarily a good idea, Arnfold. I mean... You don't know exactly how integrated they are with the structure and uh, whether their minds would be sane enough for you to call them friend, even if you did free them. What have I done? It's too late for them. We're leaving now. Blue energy with like a strange symbol over their chests. Oh, it's like an eye. That straight up looked like the eye rune from the greater eye rune from Bloodborne. Oh. No. No! Don't you dare! We came together and we're leaving together. Can you at least have raised your shield? Hmm.
Uh, guess we'll grab the crit one. Why not? He knows that Estinian just like he like walks into shot a lot in this story. Like it's kind of funny. He's like he's fashionably late to the to the cutscenes. So Ferdola dragged Arnfold all the way back. Is that a row? It is a row. <laughs> I like rows. Hmm. No, we're gonna be so close, we might as well not even bother teleporting to the Alchemist Guild. Instead of standing there gawping, why don't you tell your friend to stop whining like an underfed dog? People are fighting for their lives in there. Another one come to see the lad in silver armor. Master Dam... Dam... Demi Elliot? Or Demi Elio? I don't know, it's, it's a French-ass name and words are hard. Fudola, have you been waiting here all this time? We have done what we can. The rest is up to him. May we see him? I do not think that wise. You must let him sleep.
Thank you for bringing him back. He owes you his life. I just... I, I just wish I had been there. Perhaps... I don't know. Perhaps I could have... Could have what? Got tempered? Don't flatter yourself. You can't save everyone. No one can. Not even the warrior of bloody light. People die all the time. For no good reason. And those who take up the sword die quicker than most. If you're going to shed a tear every time a soldier falls on the battlefield, you'd best stay away. It's no place for the weak of heart. It may be that victory cannot be won without cost. But all life is precious, and I refuse to shrug at its loss. is precious <laughs> oh, you need to grow up little man before your sparkling ideals get everyone killed I'm with Fordola on this one you're right he is idealistic, but the world has more than its fair share of realists, like you and me. It's people like him who dare to dream that things could be better and make it happen against all the odds. They are the ones whose names live on forever. The heroes. <laughs> he doesn't see himself as the hero. The battlefield's littered with would-be heroes. At this rate, you'll not be next. And what'll become of your precious dreams then? They'll be gone. Like dust on the wind. Mm. Dreams worth fighting for don't die so easily. That is true. No, no idea or dream uh, dies easily. That woman, she plays at scorn, but her eyes are filled with sorrow. Sorrow deep enough to drown it. The fragrant chamber. <laughs> uh, couldn't they have called it? I don't know. The something other than fragrant chamber that just makes it sound like a euphemism. Every, everyone's everyone related to dragons is trying to copy our nod how about that your grace pray forgive us our lateness think not of that I understand a close comrade of yours was wounded in the line of duty are involved it was at the Alliance's behest that he risked all, and we are grieved to hear of his condition. Rest assured, he will receive the finest care our chirurgeons can provide. On that, you have my word. Can we maybe call in the conjurers from Gridania and have them treat to him too? I mean, we've got healing magic. 
don't see why we need to leave this up to alchemists who make potions that are far less effective. Now, we would share with you the findings of the mission. Pippin, pray relate to our guests the details of Fordola's account. First Bahamut, now Ifrit. Or Luna Ifrit, as Fan Daniel would doubtless have it. Tis now all but certain that the towers were conceived to facilitate the summoning of primals by those imprisoned within. Less certain is the means by which the Telophoroi constrain the wills of said entities to enact their designs in defiance of the pleas of their victims. Mayhap they do not. If mere proximity to the towers is enough to make loyal servants of the Empire's mortal enemies, it stands to reason that the same is true for those held captive. What I want to know is... Like, you can only be tempered by one primal. And so... Almost all of the Amalgia are tempered by Ifrit, and how are they tempered by the Tower, too? Well, I don't know. They invoke their gods for the good of Garlemald, and in their disturbed state of mind, summon a primal whose form reflects their own alteration. It all begins to make sense. Upon closer inspection, I realize that the towers bear a striking resemblance to a much larger structure which Uriange and I observed from afar during our visit to the Imperial capital. Assuming it too is capable of tempering those in its immediate vicinity, it would go some way to explain the swiftness with which the Telophoroi managed to rally so many Imperials to their cause. Well, the situation in Garlemald is indeed troubling. I fear we have more immediate concerns. Ifrit was not the only primal summoned. At approximately the same time, observers at several other towers bore witness to the emergence of further such entities. For a blessing, None appear to wield aught approaching the destructive power of Bahamut, and the Grand Companies are moving to deal with the threat even as we speak. <laughs> Though we are aware that the task will not be easy, we would call upon the Scions only as a last resort. Pray, conserve your strength for now. After all, it was not so very long ago that you rid us of Bahamut. On which note, I am pleased to report that our talks with the Amalja have reached an agreeable conclusion. They have pledged their full support to our cause. It is our hope that this historic agreement will encourage other tribes to join us at the negotiating table. And I know that I speak for all of the Allied leaders when I say that we will welcome them with open arms at such time as they do. Of course, this was only made possible by the feats of heroism performed at Pagelfarn. Moreover, we shall not allow the sacrifices of those fallen in battle to have been made in vain. As hope leads to victory, <sighs> shall victory lead to a new dawn for Eorzea. May these words ever be our guide, Your Grace. Why do you like Nanamo, Yishtola? Now, if you will forgive me, I must consult with the Syndicate on the matter of our new allies' integration. Till next we meet, my friends, I bid you safe travels and blessed respite. Hmm. 
No, I don't want to talk to Yastola again. Hmm. Nothing all looks depressed. I guess he's in thought, actually. Seems pretty good. It's been about an hour. It's been about an hour. <laughs> if I f refused, she would only pursue me. Let's get this over with, shall we? <laughs> I like how he's like upset slash like he doesn't want to risk Kryl chasing him down. <laughs> I could just think of that that meme picture that was drawn where it's just Kryl and Tataru T-posing. As he like cowers in the corner with like dried squid in his mouth or whatever. You must all be exhausted. Ere you take your rest, however, I would beg a moment of your time. All right, you have a moment Thanks starting now. Thanks to Arnvold's selfless efforts, we may now be confident that we understand the function of the towers. But many questions remain regarding the reason for the summonings and what lurks behind the looming edifice in Garlemald. Until such questions are answered, we will struggle to devise an effective strategy for thwarting the Telophory's stated aim. Nothing less than the destruction of this star. And so, given the gravity of the situation, I move that we petition the aid of Charlian. It is... Possible the ancient knowledge preserved within their archives may hide a clue to our enemy's methods. But given Charlian's established policy of non intervention, our former colleagues are not like to aid us in its discovery. Oh, I well remember what they're like. The Forum's barefaced refusal to assist you in the days prior to the calamity must rank as Charlian's most shameful act since the Exodus. Maybe they're pro Asian. Maybe they know all about them and they're pro Asian. If it were the final days to be reenacted, it would hmm. spell doom for us all. Surely even they cannot turn a blind eye to that. I trust we are all of the same mind on this matter. Urgent as it seemed, I took the liberty of petitioning the Alliance for leave to act as Eorzea's emissary and have since received their blessing. I presume your role as a student of Baldessian will carry some weight with the Forum? One can but hope. If truth be told, our organization has been a shadow of its former self ever since the disappearance of the Isle of Val. But the name does still retain some degree of prestige. I only pray it will be enough. If there are no objections, I shall depart for Charlian at once. But before I do, 
I should also mention the other matter to which I would devote some time during my stay. After hearing what transpired in the first, I began to question the true nature of Heidelin's blessing, a topic I have discussed at some length with Yishtola. We were wondering, when was the last time Heidelin spoke to you directly? Uh, what what day in the Crystarium? Uh, hmm. Hmm. Is the question truly so vexing? Perhaps you fear I will chastise you for giving the wrong answer. Or was it so long ago that you simply can't remember? History shows us that Heidelin is able to awaken the echo in her chosen, convey her will directly, and grant the blessing of light. To our knowledge, however, she has not sought to intervene in man's affairs for some considerable time. Hmm. Might not the explanation for that lie with her choice of champion? Mayhap she is content to trust in his judgment. Mayhap she is. But following my initial discussion with Kryle, I made inquiries of my own. And as far as I am able to tell, Heidelin has not made her will known to anyone. During my time in the First, the Oracle of Light spoke to me through Reen. But that was not the will of Heidelin. It was Minfilia herself. Indeed. And while she and Heidelin were inextricably linked, Minfilia yet acted of her own volition. A messenger, yes, but one who spoke with her own voice. I wonder, could Heidelin's silence suggest the presence of some disruptive force, perhaps? Some obstacle to communication? While I share Urianger's high opinion of your conduct, I see no reason why she would deny you her guidance altogether. Then again, who am I to say? The fact is, we simply don't know. But if the explanation is to be found anywhere, I can think of worse places to look than the archives of Charlian, and their research on the Ethereal Sea in particular. Resolved though I am to go, believe me when I say that I take no pleasure in the thought of leaving you a member short. Now of all times. Estinian, we stand on the eve of a struggle that will decide the fate of this star. One in which we Scions may play a telling part, yet we are but few in number. And so I must ask you again, will you join us? You see the world the way you want it to be. I see the world the way it is. You are idealistic to a fault. But I know you would never turn your back on those in need. Never close your eyes to their suffering. And somehow, your deeds lend truth to your words, giving the lie to my doubts in so doing. I have seen others draw strength from your belief. In Ishgard, in Alamigo, you inspired them to stand up and fight. To win, no less. And even when you lost those you held dear, you carried their spirit with you and made their memory your guiding light. The burden of so many hopes and dreams would be too heavy for most to bear. But you bear it willingly. As you have shown me, some dreams are too important to let go. If you have need of my strength, it's yours. After all you've done, how could I refuse? 
Thank you, Estinian. Whatever challenges await us, I shall not falter. You have my word. And now, I may bid you farewell. Safe in the knowledge that all is as it should be. In this little corner of the world, at least. You will be sorely missed. Tread warily in Charlian, and do try not to let the Forum embroil you in their politics. A forlorn hope, I know, given the individuals involved. I shall do my very best. Farewell. I wonder if that's a hint at, uh, well, she might have to deal with his father. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace, for the umpteenth time. Let's see, we've got a Genji Great Axe, an Emerald Bastard Sword, a Genji Naginata, Susaku's Fire Spear, Blue Spirit Katana, Alamegan Keelage, Ifrit's Blade, Suzaku's Long Sword, Ironworks Claymore, and he just picked up an Odenta. Clyde used that as a glam for a while. Well, does this one meet with your approval? Apparently not. Or could it be that you're still upset about the dragons? You are unwise to remind me of so costly a failure. It will not affect our plans, I trust. Oh, hardly at all. Though, admittedly, the chances of us being able to procure any more Merosidian dragons are rather slimmer following Tiamat's reappearance. Oh, but the seeds have been sown, my lord. We have only to wait for them to quicken. Speaking of preparations, is it safe to assume that you will be ready to control you know what? Let's see, we got the Crypt Lurker Spear, that's that giant mace thing. There's a Claymore of the Round, there's Susano's Greatsword. So, the Zervanite Pike. Man, there's a lot of swords. It's like it's like, but it's all like samurai dragoon or tank weapons. The hour draws nigh. This nation, forged for Asian ends, will finally prove its worth. <laughs> a mighty empire, now no more than an instrument of this star's destruction. What a pleasure it will be to put it to use. Which brings me back to our earlier topic. My lord, while I appreciate that it is not an easy decision, it really is past time you chose your weapon. There is one that I have been meaning to test. Well, well, not quite what I was expecting, though I will say. It does seem rather apt. Of course, we can't see it for some reason. Of course, of course. <laughs> you 
You will tell me if I become insufferably smug, won't you? <laughs> hmm. I wonder if there's a tower in Charlian. But since you're here, I have a question. The Scions are in close contact with the East Altenar Trading Company of Kugane, yes? I was wondering if they could place an order for some sun-dried squid. I don't seem to be able to find it in these parts. <laughs> I guess what Yuri Andre just said makes a lot of sense. That would be one reason the city-states really need to go on a defensive, prevent people and beastmen from being taken who yeah all right well that's an hour and 10 minutes or so so thanks for watching stay safe and have a great day and I'll see you again next time